Welcome to the Nerdstalker Tech Week Update Podcast here. I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerdstalker on Twitter. Another great uh, week of tech news for all of you. Uh, here with my cohort, partner in crime. Uh, I'm Greg Flory, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. Anyway, hey, uh, it was a great 4th of July week, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Happy July, everyone. Yeah. Happy July. Yeah, happy post-4th of July. Yes. I think, uh, you know, if you guys are recovering from the... Uh, Fourth of July hangover it was in the middle of the week, so I think right. half of you didn't show up to work on Thursday, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is bribery, porn, and spam are the path to riches in the app world. Yeah, so thanks to uh, oh, Wired's Ryan Tate for this story. Um, mm. So essentially, what it's coming down to here is all these startups now that are desperate for initial traffic to sort of, you know, look pretty before acquisition or, or venture funding. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to boost their ramp up numbers, right? So they're like traffic numbers and things like that. Uh, so a lot of them are going to these. Um, sort of desperate measures at the very least to to artificially pump up these uh these numbers um mm -hmm. whatever they may be and what he's saying is there's uh typically like a, a five i believe like five methods that they seem to be using here and one is buying users the other one is advertising the other one is referrals uh the other one is spam slash aggressive sharing and the other one's uh inappropriate content so effectively buying users is a really interesting one too here so what he says is let's say you're playing a game on your android phone you'd like some virtual currency to buy a new weapon or farm implement but you'd rather not whip out your credit card no problem an in-game ad informs you that you can earn several gold coins simply by installing a different app on your phone. Uh, this scheme is known as a paper install and uh, has been described uh, by one VC as a crack for app developers. Um, one broker in particular, Tapjoy, uh, was reportedly on track to make uh, $100 million per year on pay per install before Apple banned the practice from iOS last year. Uh, cool. Now, paid installs are largely confined to Google's mobile operating system. Um, and then, um, you know, there's, so there's a lot of these different sort of shady methods, advertising, right? Obviously, uh, you can uh, simply uh, pumping money into Facebook, Google AdWords, promote an app, uh, but uh, targeting technology grows more sophisticated. App makers are increasing increasingly turning to ads. Uh, In-app advertising is expected to surpass mobile web ads this year with almost $3 billion spent. Very interesting numbers. Uh, referrals, uh, obviously, uh, spam, aggressive sharing. Uh, you know, we've seen makers of apps with social networking tie-ins can fiddle with uh, sharing defaults to make their software temporarily sp spammier, sending out more notifications than usual to more friends than usual with fewer requests for user author, uh, authorization than usual. This tactic has uh, the advantage of being free. Um, and then lastly, there's inappropriate content, you know, that's the porn thing here. Uh, app makers that deal with uh, user supplied content like videos have some leeway in how they handle copyrighted and pornographic material. Normally it makes sense uh, to take that stuff down as quickly as possible. A uh, few app makers want to be associated with uh, private some, uh, pirates and perverts. But when you're desperate for a traffic spike, the better move might be to drag your heels in this instance, right? Uh, to wait a week or two to get around uh, to deleting the content that might normally remain on your servers for only a few hours more. And that way you, you uh, in theory, get more traffic. So uh, wow. uh, interesting wow. uh, strategies and tactics these, these uh, startups are, are, are um, going to the lengths that they're going to in order to artificially boost these numbers. Well, the, the advertising thing kind of makes some sense. You know, if you pay for the ads, yeah. I think the, the, the PPI, the paper installs, really kind of interesting. You just How about your next story? Thousands could lose Internet access July 9th due to well, what? Coming, coming up, coming up uh, Monday. Yeah. Um, well, uh, did you know that on July? This is from uh, Mark Quinlan, the CBC News, uh, at CBC-News on Twitter. Um, on July 9th, thousands of... Uh, or oh, I guess hundreds of thousands of people were like, you know, be without access to the Internet after the FBI shuts down the temporary DNS servers uh, used to assist victims of a massive Internet fraud uh, ring, I think. And that was kind of discovered on, uh, I think, uh, November 2011. Um, and, you know. It was it was part of that. I think we talked about the podcast last year, Operation Ghost Click. It was a you know two-year international investigation that officially ended uh, last year, as I said earlier. Um, the FBI and Association of International Law Enforcement managed to track down and apprehend six Estonians, right, and uh, who you know, you know had a front company who had organized a sophisticated system around false DNS servers. So um, 
what happened was they were supposed to shut this down in March of 2011, and then what the FBI did was they said, well, they extended it to 2011. But, um, you know, the FBI established a temporary clean servers in place of the bad ones so that the computers infected with this DNS uh, changer of virus uh, wouldn't be suddenly cut off from the Internet. But now um, – and – the contract to maintain these servers uh, on taxpayer dollars, of course, is ending July 9th. So um, we don't hear any word on the on the net that this is going to be extended. Um, in fact, you know, uh, Famita Rashad from PCMag.com in her article uh, said that you know, you know, this malware originally infected about close to a million people, a uh, million computers, um, <laughs> people. I guess I don't think computers are people now. Coming, coming down to 300,000. Uh, you know, infected um, computers is pretty good, but it hasn't changed since May from what I read on the Internet. So I think that's why, you know, the, the FBI is saying, OK, this is it. We're, we're going to shut everything down on, on, on July 9th. But that, that could be a major interruption considering how interconnected everyone is. Right. Wow. Yeah. Let's go into uh, what's this about? Uh, it's Facebook, Facebook Day. Thanks, <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, thanks, Greg. Surprisingly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got so many Facebook stories today, people. You've been warned. No. Yes, but a lot yes. of good stuff. Yeah, thanks to the Next Web Martin's uh, Next Web's Martin Bryant for this Love story. Next Web. Uh, fresh from its acquisition from Facebook last month, Face.com is closing down its facial rec recognition API over the next thirty days. Uh, while such a move isn't surprising, third-party developers may well have reason to be upset. Uh, seeing that it's just weeks ago the company said that it would continue to support them. Um, the statement issued by Face.com on, on uh, June 18th when the Facebook deal was announced was, quote, Now, lots of developers use Face.com technology to power various apps and make wonderful products. We love you guys, and the plan is to continue to support our developer community. If there are new developments, you can expect to hear from us here uh, on the developer blog and through our developer newsletter, unquote. Um, <clears throat> Face.com says that, quote, tens of thousands of engineers have signed up to develop tokens to build the face recognition products uh, we could never have thought of ourselves, unquote. Since the API launched in 2010, uh, the future of those products now <laughs> suddenly looks really shaky. Good quality facial recognition APIs uh, just doesn't fall off trees. So uh, another hard lesson for all you developers out there that are dependent on an API um, and it sounds like, uh, you know, there were hundreds of applications made on this technology uh, that are suddenly, you know, they were given some hope <sighs> towards the end of the acquisition. And, and now it's just, you know, kind of thing. Uh, there's been a report of one Microsoft developer uh, getting some feedback on Twitter from um, Facebook saying that they would extend him till October or something like that. So there's a, a glimmer of hope, but I, unless you work for a big company, who knows if, if you're just some solo developer that's using this technology in your app. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So, you know, the risks, I, I mean, the risks of it. APIs. I mean, think about it. What a snowball effect this could be, right? Mm -hmm. a, 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 a app which creates another app that uses that API. Yeah. And, and yeah. then they create an API, yeah. which then another network uses for the API. Right, right. It's <laughs> Jenga, right? Or, yeah, exactly. I mean, if yeah. this is a core core piece of your application or a selling point or something like that, yeah. you know, you've just – and someone has actually paid for that particular app and, you know, you – you're t taking away features, you know, for something someone's already bought in essence, right? So it's really weird. Um, so there's been, you know, obviously on Twitter, they're raving about this and ranting about it and saying, you know, we let's build an open source one of these. That'd be great. But this is really difficult, tough technology and probably patented up the wazoo too. So Greg, next one, more Facebook. This was a big story. Uh, this was a huge yeah, one. Yeah, this was a huge yeah. story. Yeah, people so. were really upset about this. Yeah, so uh, the, I don't know. Uh, this is Social Greg's bummer of the week. Um, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess I guess I bummed mess. you out too. <laughs> yeah, address books altered, email lost. Mm -hmm. um, so this uh, next piece is from Violet Blue, which is I thought it was an interesting oh, name wow, yeah. from uh, of CNET uh, and at CNET on Twitter. Uh, when uh, Facebook forced its uh, hundreds of millions of users into at Facebook. Uh, account commenters across the internet talked about alterations that had begun in their contracts and address books outside of Facebook. Valid email addresses were being changed to at facebook.com uh, email addresses without people's uh, awareness or consent on their phones and computers. So, um, you know, wow. Facebook commented, yeah, this is, 
God, can you imagine yeah, this? That's, I can't <laughs> What's believe going it. on? I, I mean, Facebook commented uh, bl- uh, blaming uh, confusion for the issue. Uh, that's an interesting one. Uh, by default, they say, messages from friends or friends of friends go into your inbox. Um, everything else goes into the other folder. If you click on messages in your left-hand navigation menu, you can see below the in an other folder that drops down. This is likely where the messages are being sent from other people's emails. Mm. Even if that person is friends of them on Facebook, if the friend doesn't have that email on their Facebook account, the message could end up in the other folder. Wow. Um, yeah, the other folder. I like that. But, uh, you know, Julian Pepitone also, to add fuel to the fire uh, mm-hmm. on CNN Money Tech, um, you know, a bunch of CNN uh, Money re- uh, readers uh, wrote in uh, after they read this uh, on um you know, CNN right. uh, said that uh, they complain about problems with their phone contacts that are synced with Facebook accounts. You know, for people with certain uh, uh, devices, wow. um, this bug, I think that is what Facebook is calling it. <laughs> it's a yeah. feature bug. Um, you know, feature bug. I'm really trying to yeah. figure that one out now. Um, uh, you know, bug meant that the device was pulling the last email address t- to the account rather than the primary email address, resulting in an at Facebook.com address is being pulled. So it's kind of like tearing down, right? Uh, so Facebook said, uh, you know, they didn't name specific devices, uh, mobile devices affected by this, uh, nor did it explain further about the, the feature or bug. Hmm. Um, the company said it's fixing the problem and got a, I, 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 we got the ceremonious customer service statement. It will be resolved mm-hmm. soon. Wow. <laughs> this seems to be like so, another example of Facebook, you know, doing what they want and asking for permission later, right? I mean. Well, it sends a, it sends a dangerous, I think, president to all the developer community that maybe if Facebook could get away with this, mm-hmm. you know, why should I care? That's right? true. That's true. You I know, know a lot of developers, about- when they get onboarded to Facebook, too, they've said, you know, we can put our code into production day one. So I'm wondering if... If they're just like developing too quickly and not taking enough time on the QA end or UX, you know, or something like that, because this seems to be sort of a recurring pattern with Facebook here. And they've already got such negative press over privacy and that kind of stuff, you know, like concerns. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a common problem that I see companies that are growing as fast as Facebook, hmm. um, at any company. You know, it's called processes, right? You know, in the in the corporate world where we we came from, right. um, processes are are kind of a negative tone in startup communities, right? Mm. It's kind of like saying that you know you're slowing me down, right. and right. you know um, it doesn't work, right? right but right. I, I think when you get to a size of Facebook, Google, and all this, mm. you need it, no unfortunately. You know, and and the people who can't deal with it have to leave, and right. you know that's just the deal, you know. Yeah. So, it's a shame. Because yeah, me and Greg are making a lot more money than Facebook, so we know better. Okay? <sighs> Absolutely, <laughs> Nerd Soccer Media Group. Look at our <laughs> you know, look at our too. strategy. It's all process, people. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's why. That's why Adolfo has a protect me sign behind that's him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Good call. Good call. These are my okay. auditors. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's talk about another Facebook thing that you found. Uh, Facebook to launch job postings board. On, uh, yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, thanks to uh, the Wall Street Journal and Joseph Walker, the writer of the story. Facebook Incorporate is planning to launch its own job board later this summer, said people familiar with the matter. Uh, the board will aggregate job postings to third party developers, making them available for search by Facebook users. Um, so while these uh, knowledgeable people said the new effort doesn't yet signal that Facebook is making a full-blown entry into the job recruiting market, it does represent more of a threat to other professional networking sites such as LinkedIn. Um, Should the social networking giant get more serious about the project? Uh, At least three job posting companies that currently leverage Facebook's platform will be involved in the new offering, including Branch Out, Jobvite, and Work for Labs, uh, the people said. Uh, Some partners have begun telling their clients about the job board, which could launch as soon as early August. Initially, Facebook didn't plan to monetize the service, and it's unclear whether the social network aims to do so in the future. Uh, The global online uh, job recruitment industry is estimated to be as big as $4.3 billion, so quite an opportunity there. Um, And there's tons of 
big companies and uh, corporate recruiters already using Facebook to recruit new companies. Several large companies like Unilever, Boeing, Dell, Microsoft, Walt Disney, PricewaterhouseCoopers, Walmart uh, have Facebook career pages. Some have as many as 80,000 likes. Uh, college students who want to get jobs, that, you know, go and, and like and do that kind of thing. Uh, job posting business has been undergoing restructuring since successful IPO of LinkedIn. Analysts expect uh, generic job boards to become less attractive to recruiters seeking high-quality job candidates. So quite a fertile, wow. uh, fertile ground here for job candidates. Uh, the two types of job boards expected to gain include those that employ social networking and those that target specific job seekers. Uh, on June 30th, Dice Holdings agreed to buy Fins.com, a targeted job board with editorial content from Dow Jones and Company, uh, publisher of, of uh, Newswire and the Union of News Corps for an undisclosed sum. So uh, quite an interesting story here. The the big target being LinkedIn, right? So what we're seeing, and, and me and Greg were talking about this earlier, what we were talking about was uh, we're seeing these larger companies now who are like sort of good at what they do, branching out into other people's sort of fertile ground um, where there's opportunity and it makes sense because. I mean, LinkedIn is essentially a social network, right? Right, right, right. I mean, it's one of the big three in the United States, as they call it, right? If not in the world, right. you know, um, sans China. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Greg Apple pays how much to who for what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 60 big ones, 60 million big ones to a China, China uh uh, company for uh, iPad trademark dispute. Interesting. Uh, anyway, this is reported from the Twitterverse from uh, the Canadian Globe and Mail website and an uh, article uh, from uh, Melanie Lee and Samuel Shen of Reuters. Thank you. Um, so there's been this lawsuit uh, pending, and, and this company um, in China um, has been basically uh, – holding up Apple of selling their new iPad in China. Um, if you haven't been, if you've been under a rock for the last uh, three or four months since the announcement of the new iPad, that's been the issue. Um, so it was announced this week uh, that Apple has paid $60 million U.S. to ProView Technology, um, Shenzhen company, to end a protracted legal dispute over the iPad trademark in China, which was really causing them not to sell the iPad in China. Um, so in the court-mediated settlement announced on the website uh, of the Higher People's Court of the Guangdong Province, um, it will allow Apple to get on with selling its popular PC uh, or popular tablet on one of its most important markets called China. Um, you know, the interesting thing about it, I don't know if people really kind of know, but um, – uh, what people were doing is actually going to Hong Kong and picking up the new iPad um, and then moving it back into the mainland. <laughs> so, wow. so it was actually available in China through Hong Kong, but it, it, for some reason there was an uh, announcement uh, from – I think I saw it on Wall Street Journal – that uh, a Hong Kong court actually uh, upheld the trademark. <laughs> Speed run, you're up first, right? Yeah, man. So this one, is, thanks to The Verge, uh, Louis Goddard, uh, this is uh, a Def Leppard nice. story, apparently. Uh, what we have here is Def Leppard re-records own song to win back digital download revenue. Um, Sheffield Rockers Def Leppard, probably most famous for their 1987 hit Pour Some Sugar uh, on Me, are going rogue. Uh, after leng lengthy negotiations with Universal Music, uh, the band has been unable to agree to a suitable royalty fee for digital downloads of their back catalog. Instead of giving in, they've taken advantage of a law which protects cover versions from copyright claims, uh, re-recordings of their own songs, and releasing them through iTunes. Very, very clever loophole here. Describing the new versions as forgeries, unquote, frontman Joe Elliott explains the band's new arrangement with their label, quote, our contract is such that they can't do anything without our permission. Not a thing. So we just sent them a letter saying, no matter what you want, you're going to get no as an answer. So don't ask, unquote. <laughs> um, I, I think they should open up the Louis C.K. playbook. This is, uh, yeah, <laughs> this is awesome. How about you, Greg? Oh, got another Facebook. Uh, Facebook testing the wad button. It, it, this is great. Um, let's. Uh, we got the uh, story from uh, Paul Martin from Social Commerce Today. Um, the social commerce platform Eighthbridge has been successfully uh, serving retailers with its own custom Facebook button. Uh, 
uh, serving graphite for some time now, uh, want buttons, uh, love buttons, have buttons, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it seems that Facebook thinks that this is such a smart idea that the social network giant is now developing its own homegrown version. I think it's just it, it's time coming. It may, certainly makes sense for retailers to collect want data. Hmm. You know, you could you could separate now from the like oh, data, yeah. I guess, totally. Totally. you know. Yeah, man. You know, uh, um, so I think um, why don't you guys read about that uh, or even um, search the net about it? I think it's the it's the next uh, button coming from Facebook. So yeah. and brands. Yeah. So it's a great great thing for brands. So anyway, yeah. let's go to your next one. I thought that was kind of cool. I saw it on your Facebook this morning. Yeah. So we got a levitating light here. So thanks to Core Seventy Seven, uh, posted by Hip Stomp, was the story. Eighteen year old Chris Riegler, an engineering student at Australia's University of Queensland, Queensland, has developed a wireless LED light that floats. The damn thing levitates. It's not physically connected to anything. Um, so how does it work? The short answer is magnets. The, the long scientific answer with support links uh, will be on our show notes. For inspiration, uh, Riger credits the work of Discovery Channel's Jeff Lieberman, the pioneer who did something similar in the mid-2000s and paved the way for others to improve upon it. Uh, the levitation work of mad scientist and tinker Eric Taylor and the wireless power transfer work of Croatian tinker going by the handle of Marco. So awesome. There's a great uh, video of it, uh, you know, him doing in this cardboard box kind of thing where he turns this thing on. Nice. and the magnets nice. take and it does levitate and he remotely nice. turns on the LED and it's super cool. Uh, the implications nice. of this, you know, are going to be is super exciting stuff. Nice. So how about you, Chris? Hey, oh, last one. Um, another from the big three as we talked about mm -hmm. it, uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn says Twitter posts no longer displayed on site. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, LinkedIn, uh, owner of the world's biggest professional networking site, as we said earlier, um, said posts from Twitter Inc. will no longer be displayed on the Inc. Uh, on the site uh, as the microblogger encourages users to visit its own services. So this was from Brian Womack of Bloomberg News. Thank you. So I, I think what has happened now is that the, the, everyone's trying to, as we say, become the king of the mountain when it comes to uh ads and re revenue and stuff like that so linkedin said hey we we don't want to play with essentially um twitter's expanded tweets um because if you think about it um apis are uncontrolled right so so it really depends on whoever uses the api to use that and then uh, i think twitter is really clamped down on the api uh, rules for using its api to make sure it's branded correctly and so i think hence it was really a divorce from uh, Twitter to uh, LinkedIn, not really, as I found out uh, later, uh, uh, reading up on this story, uh, ending their tweet syndication. <laughs> So last speed round, my story, Louis C.K. is kind of a follow-up to oh. last week. Uh, his direct sales concert has made $6 million and rising and running and scalping all but extinguished. So thanks to Corey Doctorow for this little blurb. Uh, a report from Louis C.K.'s No Fees, No Scalpers direct sales concert tour. Mr. C.K. is up to more than $6 million and scalping is down to less than 1% compared with 25% for his other traditional sales events. Uh, CK has been approached by scalpers who defend their practice by saying it's legal. Uh, he, re he replies to them in uh, this statement to Laughspin, uh, where he says, Con contact with these scalpers has been enlightening. They tend not to respond. Oh, they tend to respond with indignance and a defensive posture. Quote, hey, man, scalping's not a crime, unquote. We're not treating it as a crime or even a wrongdoing. We are just competing with them on behalf of my fans to enforce the terms and conditions of our ticket sales and to keep the prices down. It's worth the effort. It's working and it's been kind of fun. It's even been kind of fun. Nice. Uh, so, nice. which is a pretty good reply. Uh, I'm not trying to get you outlawed is what he says. I'm trying to make you obsolete, uh, unquote. Whoa. So very cool because nice. um, this is an example of the open market, right? I mean, he's competing with scalpers right. effectively, right? So he's not trying to outlaw. Yeah, them, I which love is, it. Which is really cool. This is a really interesting take on it and good on him for his success and go support Louis C.K. on this in this endeavor. Tip time! Well, tip time! Tip time! Okay, I got the, this is Social Greg's Drippler tip of the week. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Matan Tomley well, and you, Drippler for that. Uh, the DAE 750... <sighs> 
I don't know where they come up with these product names. You know, they come up with a Galaxy, they come up with this DA. Anyway, I'm sorry, I have a rant. Uh, Samsung Audio Dock for Galaxy S smartphones and iPhones unveiled. Uh, so um, uh, via Android Authority on Drippler, uh, Samsung unveiled, unveiled yesterday a new audio with dock accessory that can be used with its own Galaxy Android smartphones and the iOS devices. Um, and, and the cool thing about this is that it supports wireless connectivity. So no more wires, gang. This is really a cool dock. If you look at it, really nicely done. Kind of, uh -huh. it'll look good in a really formal living room. Neato. Really nice. Um, it also um, includes Bluetooth 3.0 um, and analog and USB uh, ports if you really have to have wires. But this is really cool. I thought uh, that was kind of neat that awesome. they're coming out with these type of devices. Yeah. Good tip. Man. So spin your own DJ tunes at... Uh, at your parties, and uh, you're cool. Yeah. Without wires. I know, right on. Right What's your tip, man? Yeah, thanks to Google for this one. My tip is uh, power searching with Google. It's a free online nice. uh, community uh, based course. It's a class essentially showcasing search techniques on how to use them to solve real everyday problems. Uh, this free class where you can register is uh, it features six 15 minute classes, interactive activities to practice your new skills, opportunities to connect with others using Google Groups, Google Plus, and Hangouts on Air. And uh, upon passing the post course assessment, a printable certificate of completion, which will be emailed to you. So, this is one of those free online courses. It's awesome. I'm surprised more companies don't do this. It's great to see Google doing this. You know, I'm a really Really into Google Analytics, and it's part of my my day job, and um, mm. and it's very interesting. And so, to be on the client side and to, to learn how to search better with like an advanced kind of features and things like that, I think would also help the general consumer because you know um, we all want to find what we're looking for, right? And it's awesome right. that they provide this. So yeah, we'll provide the link in the show notes to to register for the class uh, now and in the future. So thanks. Nice. Nice. I think that's going to be really cool. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm kind of glad someone's uh, they're doing something like that, like you said. So, Greg, what so do we anyway, got coming up, man? We got SF New Tech coming up yeah. uh, on uh, Tuesday, not a Wednesday. Um, Greg will be uh, on stage. July 10th. Uh, oh, God, yes, <laughs> I will be on stage for a client. Yeah, he noticed that. Uh, I'm Woo called the marketing evangelist. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be presenting on the other side of the camera this time nice. instead of actually – uh, producing the Ustream 4 as of New Tech, cool. and uh, we have some pretty cool, uh, uh, pretty cool startups along with us. To, uh, you know, I think we're the coolest startup, but yeah. that's okay. I, I should say that, right? Um, so uh, you know, join us at 119 uh, Mighty, I'm 119 Utah at the Mighty yep. um, yeah. uh, uh, Club uh, in San Francisco for that event. Uh, doors open at 5:30, and uh, pitches started at 7:30. So yes, anyway. And I got another event, uh, Transmedia Jam. Um, awesome. uh, one of my good friends, I belong to a Transmedia group, which is really trying to bring back the uh, kind of the movie industry back to uh, San Francisco. Uh, they have a Transmedia Jam, which is basically a, a, a um, hackathon-like event for storytellers. So that will be happening on uh, July 20th through the 22nd. So uh, I encourage you to go to http transmedia sf org to get some more information about that and then what's this other event about uh, is there another uh, event coded coming up yeah yeah there's a bunch of coed um, events coming up so essentially what coded is is uh, you go to codeed.org and what it is it's a, a site where uh, you can register to, to you know uh, to teach girls how to program and typically these are like uh, middle school age girls elementary school age girls oh, nice. and uh, you can also nice. volunteer and sign up if you have any sort of you know tech experience whatsoever um, to to like mentor these girls or, or to go in and teach a class or something like that. Um, and then they put on, you know, these different events for you to go ahead and go sign up and learn more about it. Uh, get more information at coded.org. Um, I'll see about their future dates. I don't see a, a current date right now. Um, but okay. uh, yeah, check them out. Code at the C-O-D-E-D uh, dot org. No, it's great. I mean, Dolphin and I support education and uh, a lot uh, for a lot of reasons, and I think uh, that's why we have this one up. So it's it's kind of nice. Yeah. Thank you for that. Believe actually, me, I'm, I'm always educating Greg. By the way, everyone, just to let you know. So, uh, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> that's why Greg I, supports I, it. My little <laughs> pinky. So you know, a reminder. Uh, you can suggest some stories for us on um, using the hashtag NRDSDK. Or, and you can visit us on nerdstalker.com, which we have a lot of, besides the podcast, we have some interesting articles and interviews on startups. Um, you can visit us on this podcast and subscribe to us on the iTunes audio and video. You will please rate us um, with a high rating, of course. And uh, visit us on the YouTube channel, uh, Nerdstalker TV. So anyway, 
Uh, how do they get a hold of you, my friend? You can get a hold of me at NerdStalker on Twitter. Or feel free to email me, Adolfo, at NerdStalker.com any old time. How about you, Greg? Yeah, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at, uh, at SocialGreg, or, and you can email me at uh, SocialGreg at NerdStalker.com. Anyway, hey, thanks for a great cast, man. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching and listening. All right. Be careful out there. <laughs>